Good evening. Thank you for making this making so far in the MySQL track. I'm pretty sure by now you have heard so much of MySQL. Um, my name is Harim Borodriya. I am working on security features of MySQL Server and MySQL Client. And my session today is about how you can improve the security of your database using features available with MySQL 8.0. I'll focus on the hardening part of the security, not just the default part of it. OK, so let's move on. As usual, this is the same for the statements. Everything I say is just for information. Please don't make any such decision out of it. Um, we'll cover some part of motivation why security hardening is important for a database. And then we'll move to different aspects of security, including deployment, uh, operational security, and backup security. So let's move on. Why? Why it's needed? Um, because of all this. So data breaches are more frequent. They are bigger. They are getting bigger every day. And they are getting expensive ev with every single day passing. And I'm not just, just talking about the value of the data that you're losing after the data breach or let's say denial of service. I'm also talking about the steps you need to take to recover, to get back to the same state. Uh, you have to spend resources to identify the cause, you have to mitigate those costs, you have to change the policies, you have to, you are obliged to, uh, you know, fulfill the regulatory requirement and what not, and not to forget the reputation. And the, the penalties for data breaches or the you know, services are getting severe day by day, GDPR, PCI penalties, it's growing. So, it's really critical that you try to harden your database, or try to harden your application as much as possible so that you don't have to suffer through all these things. How does a database play a part in this scenario? So there are many aspects. You have a mission critical database, but it has a poor configuration which allows certain unsafe operations. Or you are using overly privileged account which are not really meant for your application or you are using very weak access control, you are using two cores of, you know, coarse grain permission uh, rather than fine grain access control over your tables or columns. Weak authentication, no auditing or monitoring, which will allow you to, you know, forensic value in your uh, data breach. You have hardened your deployment, but your backups are insecure, so that's as good as losing your data. Uh, you are not using encryption, you are not using proper credential control or key management, applications are poorly coded. There are literally hundreds of ways your database can be exposed and you know you can suffer data breach or an of service. So how not to do that? So let's jump in. Let's start with the deployment part because that's the first thing that you will do once you have a database product. Uh, verify your package. Uh, you know, you suddenly after working for a month if you realize that there is a malware in your package, it's a bad. So verify your package, verify the signature, verify the keys, verify the hash, and then install the package. Always choose the right package. For example, in, in case of MySQL, we have various, I'm talking for example of let's say RPM packages. We have various RPM packages which provide server binaries, client binaries, test databases, demo databases, header files for development of new plugins or components. Install only only things that you need, don't install more, because if you are installing more, you are actually opening up the attack surface, you are actually allowing somebody malicious to go in and leverage on those points. Uh, harden your configuration. De defaults are good, but analyze your own requirement and harden them as much as possible. There are useful plugins which are available with MySQL database, use them. Use them to harden your passwords, use them to make sure that brute force attacks are thwarted, and rely on package managers. Don't simply rely on TarGZ installer. I can understand that it is very easy to use the TarGZ installers, but package management like Yum or Dev packages or Windows installers, they are smart installers. They, they provide a secure by default installation. They install useful plugins by default. It makes your life easier. Uh, what we did in MySQL, we started a story with MySQL 5.7. We are continuously doing this as of MySQL 8.0 and we will continue in the future as well. That we are making it secure by default while making sure that uh, it's not hampering the usability. So we removed test and demo databases, put them in a separate package. 
All the tests are now in separate packages. There are no multiple accounts. There is only a single local root account. So database is not having a remote root which can be accessed from anywhere. Uh, by default, server and client supports encrypted connections. So your connection security aspect is covered. There are pre-configured location for import export of the data, which limits where you put your data and how accessible it is to everyone. We also make sure that SC Linux and Lab Armor policies are also applied with MySQL so that only the things which are needed are configured as well things are visible. And if you are using, using package managers, it makes sure that extra security sensitive plugins are already installed. And we, we run as not as a pseudo, or we run as a, you know, an account which is not very privileged, which exposes an entire system. So some part of the configuration that you probably need to harden or can take a look at is secure file preview. This controls the location of the data for import and export operation. Configure it. If you are not using this operation, just disable it. Setting it to null will simply disable your data import export operations. If you are not using it, disable it. Don't use symbolic links. It's not advisable. It's off by default. You should keep it that way. Uh, general log and log rope, use it only for the debugging purposes if you are running into any issues. Otherwise, it's way too much of the information you don't use it. If you are not going to have a network attached to your database, use skip networking. It will just allow you to work on the local host. It's not exposing your database outside. Uh, do use SSL. I cannot emphasize this on this option. How not? Doesn't matter how secure your database is. Doesn't matter how secure uh, your disk is. If your communication is not secure, it's of no use. So please always use SSL <coughs> and always set up SSL with valid values. Last but not the least, always stay up to date. Security patches. Uh, are called security patches for the reason they improve the security. It's not just for the database, from OS point of view as well. So apply security patches, stay up to date, follow the hardening guideline of the OS that you are using, and make sure that you have everything that you need to secure your system as well as your database. Uh, right. So let me move on. Operation security. What you can do to secure your running database server. That's the first stop is communication. Use non default port. I mean, 3306 is known to everyone. If a malicious user is looking to find out whether a database is running, MySQL database is running, they will likely scan the 3306 and try to identify whether you have it running it or not. And once you have it running at that point, then they will try to you know get access to or probably try a denial of service at that port. So use non default port, but make sure that you have. App Armor or SC Linux configured to allow those communication to those ports as well. Use SSL, proper certificates, use uh, authorized CA to sign server certificates and use them. Uh, if you really want to disable you know, unencrypted connections server supported by require secure transport, it basically makes sure that either the connections are local, that is socket or shared memory, or they have SSL in it. From client point of view, when you are connecting to server, always use verify identity. This will make sure that you are talking to the guy you are supposed to talk to and not to something else. And always use latest TLS protocol. MySQL now supports TLS 1.3 as well, in, as of 8.0.14, so use it. Uh, for replication point of view, change master and GR setup. Configure your channels to use SSL. It underline it uses libmysql clients, so you can, you know, point them to use SSL C, SSL certificate as needed. Third up, authentication. Uh, use secure authentication. We have caching SHA-2 password, which is by default in 8.0. It uses SHA-2, multiple round of SHA-2 is a hash along with a sort. Even better, if you are using an enterprise edition of MySQL, you can actually configure MySQL to work with, let's say, LDAP, which is configured in your organization. So use LDAP. Use password policy. MySQL provides you a way to configure the complexity of a password, lifetime of a password, whether it can be used after n number of, uh, you know, uh, n, n passwords or not. All these things are configurable. Use it. 
And when you are changing the password, use a secure channel because that's where you are sending your password to the server. If your applications uh, are, you know, have cached the password in certain level, we support dual password now. So dual password makes sure that you change a password, but your old password still works for till the time you discard it. So it allows you to allows your application to move over to the new password, and then finally you can ditch the old password. For sensitive account, uh, use TLS connection to verify client's identity. Ideally, you should use a non-default root account. When MySQL Server installs, it creates root as the most powerful account. You should rename it to something else. Always monitor. We have MySQL Enterprise Monitor as well as various information schema views. Always monitor your user account, evaluate the need of a user account. If you find a user account which is not being used, lock it or disable it. It's, it's for your own safety. Right. Next part is authorization. Uh, MySQL 8.0 provides support for the roles. It's a very powerful tool to manage the authorization. You can group various privileges, you can create a role hierarchy, and you can effectively manage your users to use these roles and have all the permissions that is required. So use the roles. Always follow principle of least privileges. If you don't require insert permission for an operation, don't grant user the insert permission. As simple as that. Because if you grant permissions which are not required, chances are that those permissions can be misused if your application or your database was exposed somehow. Do not use a single account for multiple applications. It's very tempting, but separation of duty is very important. Uh, sorry, that, that was no account overloading. Separation of duty is all about trying to make sure that there is no single super user. You basically make sure that you have lesser admins which have some of part of the admin privileges and you just divide them between them. Don't use, don't do account overloading. Application should have their own dedicated user that makes your life easier and it's better for auditing and forensics as well. And again, review and improve. Enterprise monitor, information schema view, always see what's going on and remove the unwanted privileges. Next up, encryption. MySQL currently has ability to encrypt your table data, your redo and undo log, your binary log, using keyring plugins. So use it for your sensitive data, use it for your sensitive content and data. Use a proper key server which allows you to store keys, manage key, enforce a key rotation policy and everything. If your application relies on symmetric or asymmetric encryption, there is AES encrypt, AES decrypt, which is for symmetric encryption. And on an enterprise server, we have enterprise encryption plugin which provides asymmetric encryption as well. It also allows you to you know, sign and verify content if need be. And always keep your keys safe. That's good. With Enterprise Edition, MySQL also has masking and de-identification functions. So you have a string database, string-based data masking, which will mask part or full of full content. Uh, the specific masking like you know SSN masking or payment card masking. And there is a uh, dictionary-based replacement as well, which will convert one of the values to certain cover identity as well. Uh, auditing is really important because it allows you to figure out what went wrong. So always use auditing, enable audit. Uh, always audit sensitive account, always audit operations on sensitive objects. Very importantly, audit failures because failures are probably a, you know an indicator that somebody is trying to do something that they are not supposed to do. Your applications won't try to do an operation which is denied to your application, so you have configured your account in such a manner. So you know, audit your failures. Uh, it's very important when you're auditing to strike a balance. So MySQL offers a really wide range of audit filters which you can use when you are auditing. You can configure it to make sure that only the sensitive operations are audited not everything so that you don't pay the price performance penalty for the same. And protect your audit logs. Maybe write them on write only media, write once media, and don't give DBAs access to those locations because then it defeats the purpose. If your DBA goes wrong, you can't really protect your system against it. 
Mask can also provide a firewall which can learn the behavior of an application. It can detect an anomaly and it can actually deny a query which is an application is not supposed to use. So if you want, you can go ahead and you know make it in learning mode. It will start learning the behavior, then put it in detect mode where it will just report the queries which an application is not supposed to fire. And finally, if you are satisfied, you can just switch it on to protect mode and then it will start blocking the queries. It's a whitelist based uh, and uses statement digest, so it is uh, not vulnerable to things like SQL injection. So make sure you use these features. These are, by the way, enterprise edition features. Last part, backup security. Uh, they're critical for your you know, business continuity. Uh, it, it allows a service to come to a sane state because, you know, after, let's say, a denial of service attack, or you are migrating to another server, or you are part of audit trail. Always encrypt your backup, put them in a protected media like write once media, read, write once read many times media, and always delete your obsolete backup. You don't need it, there's no reason to keep it. But use a secure delete function, just don't do an RM minus RM, which is simply removing an IO directory problem. And schedule mode store drills. This will help you manage the downtime. If your DBAs are used to restore the database to a same state every now and then, in an actual event of a disaster, they will take less time to you know, bring the server back up online. At the end, I would like to you know, showcase the security architecture of MySQL, and this is for the community version of MySQL, where you have network encryption, you have strong authentication and login policies, ready your access control, and database event logging and file-based keying as well. On an enterprise version, we have firewall, we have enterprise authentication, support for enterprise audit and key vault, as well as enterprise monitor. With that, I'm done. These are the resources you can take a look at to further identify, uh, you know, where you can secure your database. Uh, there's a security guide, there's a secure deployment guide, and some white papers which are useful as well as the blogs where we continuously put information which is relevant for database security. So thank you all for being kind audience. If there are any questions, let me know. Thank you very much.